um, but we have something else for you at the moment. There is um, a professor, where is he? Yes, he's over there. Jan van Maarseveen, he is uh, associate professor in organic chemistry. Give an applause for Jan van Maarseveen. <laughs> yeah, you also have an inspirational speech for us and some good advice for, um, for the world. Some big words. I hope so. Yeah. Yes, I hope so. The floor Let's is see. yours. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, I'm standing here because I'm angry. I'm angry because we burn up fossil fuels and we do that even at an increasing rate. And when you burn up fossil fuels, there will be CO2 in the atmosphere. And that's causing problems because our climate is warming up. But also that CO2 that dissolves in the ocean and that causes there really a huge problem. So I'm not going to talk about my research. I'm a scientist and I'm an organic chemist. And as an organic chemist, I study the chemistry of carbon. Carbon and that is the element of life. And what we are doing in our group is that we are searching for new ways, for new synthetic methodology to make molecules that are cyclic. So make these carbon atoms in the ring had to develop new molecules. Molecules that maybe become drugs. But drugs, how important are they? I think not for the survival of mankind. I can't get cancer. And that can be a cancer that cannot be cured. And then I will die. And that's for me, of course, it's a tragedy. And also for my friends, and, uh, and, uh, and my relatives. But it's a not a problem for mankind. And uh, uh, I would say the burning of fossil fuels is. And how did that uh, become clear to me? Uh, it was two years ago that I became the best teacher of the University of Amsterdam. That was the event of my life. Of course, after the birth of the children. Uh, that's the most important thing, of course. <laughs> But okay, then I, 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 I had the opportunity to organize a course all by myself, especially for the honor students. And, and already for many years I was surprised that a small molecule like carbon dioxide, I have this molecule here, there's only very little in the atmosphere and that has so much effect on the climate. So I thought I'm going to organize a course, climate and molecules. And then a lot of climate scientists, every week another one came to the, to the university and gave a course. And after that course I also invited the climate criti criticists. I was in doubt. But now since half a year I would say, for me there are no doubts. We are now really, as it is uh, 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 related to climate, we are really in a car now. 200 kilometers an hour. We are not driving a safety belt and uh, the, the wall of concrete is coming towards us. And that's really the stage where we are now. Okay, but I'm an organic chemist, this is not my research. But burning fossil fuels is organic chemistry. Fossil fuels is carbon. So charcoal is 100% carbon. So I know the problems that are involved in when you burn fossil fuels. But also, maybe carbon can be the solution to that. So I want to uh, uh, discuss with you the problems, but also that, to my opinion, really we can solve it. So my kids, what I hope is that 30, 40 years, then I will die, and, and, and that the world then will be in a better shape than it is now. And I hope that it is even better with my grandchildren. But I know that will not be the case, because we are burning fossil fuels even at a higher rate. But also, I'm really an optimist, and I'm sure that we can find a solution for that. I'm absolutely sure. But we have to. I don't have the solution yet. But we can find it in 10 years. So in 10 years we have these technologies, and in another 10 years we need engineers that bring these technologies into practice. We can do that. And if you say to me, Jan, you're kidding, that's impossible, then I now have an example of a person who really made the impossible possible. And that person is on the next slide. It's John F. Kennedy. It's 1961, and he was speaking to the Senate, and he said, give me a bunch of money, and within 10 years, an American will stand on the moon. At that time, the technology was not there. The rockets they needed was not there. They really did not know how to go to the moon. They did not know how to walk on the moon. And also, they had no idea how to get back from the moon to the Earth. But John F. Kennedy said, give me the money, and there will be an American on the moon, and he will come back. Now, and what you know, of course, is, is history. Even eight years after that, Kennedy made the impossible possible. And I am really I'm convinced that when such a charismatic person stands up again, that's the only person that can help us, that really can save, I would say, mankind. OK, now let's go to the facts. So this is a slide where you can see that in 
1750, so that was the start of the Industrial Revolution, that there was, uh, uh, this is the old, uh, these are the old slides, uh, okay, but I can do it with these slides. So, so at that time, there was 1,474 gigaton of fossil fuel buried in the earth. And we are now living in 2014, and, and of that now, 1110 uh, gigatons is left. So one third is burned up already. So that means that 365 tons is burned into carbon dioxide and is present in the atmosphere. Now, how does it look like in the atmosphere? You can see it there. That, that, that at the start of the Industrial Revolution, there was also a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. 589 gigatons. But at this moment now, 240 gigatons has added to that. And CO2 in the atmosphere, we all know that, it's a greenhouse gas, so it causes heating up of the atmosphere. But not many people talk about another uh, um, aspect of CO2, and that it is dissolves perfectly in water. And when CO2 dissolves in water, and I have an equation here for the chemists, so CO2 reacts with water, this is water, and this is carbonic acid, carbonic acid. And that dissociates to really form H+, and that's an acid. And this is really going on in the oceans now. The oceans are basic, they are not acidic. But the oceans, the pH, it's go do it goes down, it becomes less basic. And many species rely on that pH. And so we are really now ruining a very subtle uh, uh, ecosystem in the oceans. But now I will shift gears. Because CO2, as you can see, I have now said that CO2 is very bad. But from this moment on, CO2 is our friend. Because life cannot do without CO2. As you have seen, in 1750, there was 589 gigatons of CO2 in the atmosphere. And that's a greenhouse gas. And we should be very happy that it was there at that moment, because the average temperature on Earth is 15 degrees. And when there would be no carbon dioxide, the temperature on Earth would be minus 15 degrees. So the ice, the, 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 the Earth would be completely covered with ice. So CO2 is essential for the climate. But CO2 is also very important for us, because CO2 is the building block of life. And that's what you can see here. So this is the reaction equation of all life on Earth. We all live here because there is photosynthesis. So plants and bacteria, they are able that they react carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And so when you see a tree growing, all the weight of that tree is coming from carbon dioxide out of, out of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide and water, they react, it's called photosynthesis, and that gives glucose, sugar, and oxygen. And we both need that, otherwise we will die. We need that glucose. Everything needs that. And I can show that to you. What I'm doing here at this moment is I'm burning up glucose. I'm living because I use this energy, which was essentially solar energy, and what I'm doing now is producing, oh my god, what I'm doing now is producing water and I'm also producing carbon dioxide. And that's an experiment I will show to you. So what I have here is a bottle, and that bottle is of glass. And I will show now to you that I'm now producing water. So when I breath, you can see I'm producing water. But I'm also producing carbon dioxide. In this solution there is a compound that reacts with carbon dioxide and you will see that this solution will turn into turbid. As you can see, this is not a clear solution anymore. So what you can see, it has reacted. So I'm also, I'm also producing carbon dioxide. So this equation here, this is what I'm doing. But all the carbon atoms in my body, they all emerge from glucose. It's not only the source of energy, it's also the source of all the molecules in my body. So it's really the building block of life. And for many hundred thousands of years, this was really in an equilibrium. So in nature there was glucose produced and that was used up and carbon dioxide was produced and it was in a perfect equilibrium. And then the industrial revolution came and that changed everything because then we are using fossil fuels. For many millions of years all that carbon was stored 
and now we are using it up. And that means that now this carbon dioxide, it's a lot increased because we are burning fossil fuels and we really should stop with that. And as you, as you have seen now, carbon dioxide is essential for nature, but carbon dioxide can also be the solution for us, as I will point out. Now this is the photosynthesis, eh, as you can see. Leaves are able to produce glucose, but what I think as a chemist, and that solution is absolutely not there yet, is we can also do that chemically. We can absolutely find catalysts that turn carbon dioxide into methanol. It's a very simple molecule. So nature is making glucose, that's very complex, but we only need methanol. So this is used in racing cars, this is a beautiful fuel. So we can use really the trick from energy to make fuel for the future. But we can even do it simpler. I'm sure that we can find catalysts that are able to cleave water into hydrogen and oxygen. And that's even an easier system. And that's producing water as a side product. So I'm absolutely optimistic that we can find solutions. We can use biotechnology to make our fuels. And also, we can, uh, a physicist can design much better solar cells to produce electricity. I mean, there are many ways. And a Boeing that flies from Amsterdam to New York really needs another, really a completely other source of energy than a train riding from Amsterdam to Madrid or a car riding in the city. And so in 10 years, there will be many solutions. And when we look around now, then already many is going on. You see solar cells already, you see windmills, but it's almost nothing. It's really almost nothing. We really now should urge, and I'm sure in 10 years we have the technology, and in 20 years it is in practice. Money is not the problem. Eight cents per litre extra when you fuel up your car, and in, in the Netherlands it will be one billion euros. So what we need is, in Europe, we have to build in Germany a building, and that's not NASA, but it has the same size, and you put there thousands of the best physicists and chemists, they're not going to do their hobby there, they have the same mission, they have not to put the man of the moon. No, they are then going to develop the new technology so that in 20 years we do not need any fossil fuels anymore. And it's not happening. I don't see that on the agenda of politicians and I don't see that on the agenda of decision makers. And I'm sure that the only person that can help is a charismatic person and that person is here again. So I really hope that John F. Kennedy stands up again because we now at this time, we need him. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jan van Maarsveen. Um, so we need another John F. Kennedy. Yes. And do you have anyone in mind? <laughs> Obama yeah, was, maybe? Uh, or? Yeah, yeah, that was really the, the, the Bill Clinton eh, and uh, yeah. Obama I was thinking of. And, uh, yeah, the problem is that when you think about Europeans, there are not so many charismatic Europeans, eh? Hmm. All American, hmm. then, eh? Hmm. Okay, so we have to uh, find one. We have to find a new one. Yeah, I think we really need one. We <laughs> okay. need one. No, and I'm, I'm serious about that. I'm, I, I gave this talk, and, and, and I'm really pessimistic about such a person. And, 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 and my problem is that, as a chemist, I know that we can solve it. Yeah. And, and for me, it's unbelievable that no one sees the problem. So no one sees the problem, but you are no, very it's hopeful. It, I will, it's, it's, not, it's not urgent. I mean, I mean, urgent is for us tomorrow or next week. Mm -hmm. But urgent is not 20 years. And that's the time frame we have to think on. But when you, when you should be ready in 20 years, you should act now. When there is a problem in 20 years, you need that other 20 years. Yeah, and it, it takes 10 years. Mm -hmm. And another 10 years to develop that technology. So we, would start, we should start now. Well, we've made... We made a beginning today. I hope people are inspired. I saw some questions from the from the audience, but 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 after the second speech, uh, you can ask anything to Jan van Maarsveen in the media uh, cafe. So please go there after the second speech. Thank you, uh, Jan van Maarsveen. Okay, thank you.